concentration of auxin and often a reduced organic salt content. For some kinds of plants, adventitious roots then develop readily on these propagules. Better root hair development may occur in an aerated liquid medium, for example, on sorber rods or filter paper bridges, than in an agar medium. With other plants, rooting is best if the propagule is kept in the auxin medium for only one or two days and then transferred to an auxin-free medium. Or the propagule may simply be dipped into a rooting solution immediately and inserted directly into an auxin-free medium. The third method is to include an elongation phase here by placing the propagules into a medium without cytokinin or at very low levels of cytokinin for two to three weeks and in some cases adding gibberellic acid. This may be necessary when numerous short shoots are resulted from the multiplication stage. Selection for uniform propagules and discarding the inferior and abnormal or diseased plantlets should be made at the start of this stage. Sometimes cultures deteriorate with time, lose leaves, fail to grow, develop tip bear, go dormant, or lose potentiality to regenerate. Plants of a species having an inherent dormancy or rest requirement may need to be chilled to stimulate new growth and elongation. Other problems indicated may require detailed experimentation to ascertain the reasons for lack of growth in cultures. So to summarize, the objectives of this stage are to select vigorous and uniform plantlets and induce root formation either in vitro or in vivo. This is the final and most critical stage in micropropagation. Plants grown under in vitro conditions have an anatomy and physiology which makes them unsuitable for survival in the outside environment. These plants have been growing under high humidity, low light intensity, constant temperature, aseptic conditions and readily available nutrient. Resulting in leaves which do not have epicuticular wax, the stomata are either non-functional or not as receptive to changes of humidity as are the in vitro grown plants. The vascular connections of a stem and leaves are not extensive and more importantly, these plants are not autotrophic. That is, they cannot synthesize their own food at this stage because their photosynthetic machinery is either not activated or partially activated. Indeed, in vitro grown plantlets are called heterotrophic or mixotrophic. Because of these reasons, the in vitro grown plantlets need to be introduced to the outside environment in a gradual manner. As a general rule, the plantlets are removed from the culture vessel in a room away from the direct sunlight. The gelling agent is washed away completely to remove a potential source of contamination. The long roots and shoots are slightly trimmed and the plants are then transferred into a suitable pasteurized potting mix. The potting mix may be a mixture of sand, peat and vermiculite. No fertilizer is added to the pots at this stage. At all times, desiccation must be avoided and that can be achieved by frequent water spray on the plants. Initially, plantlets should be protected from desiccation by placing them in a glass house with reduced light and high humidity. This may be achieved by use of foggers or misters or use of wet tents. To reduce light, a shade cloth can be used. Shade cloth come in various densities. Up to 70% of the light may need to be eliminated in the first few days. Gradually, the light intensity is increased and the humidity is decreased until such time the plants have developed functional roots. The temperature in the glasshouse 
should be maintained as close to that as the growth room, where the plantlets come from. Nutrient of the potting mix is another limiting factor. To play it safe, do not provide any nutrient in the potting mix until plantlets have been removed from under the mister. This could be about two to three weeks, after which time a slow-release fertilizer, such as osmocote, can be added to the pot. Dilute liquid fertilizers, such as aquazole, could also be included on a weekly or fortnightly basis. The length of the time taken to acclimatize plants varies depending on species, but generally it takes between four to six weeks. Although at this stage the plants are grown under non-sterile conditions, the hygiene is still very important. Diseased plants must be eliminated quickly and the area be washed with a suitable disinfectant. The acclimatized plants are later transferred to larger pots or to fill as required. So to summarize, the objective of this stage is the production of hardened off plants that can cope with the outside environment. Producing plants through tissue culture is now an important method of asexual reproduction in many horticultural plants and an adjunct in plant production through genetic engineering, which will dominate plant production scenes in years to come. We hope that this video has provided you with some fundamentals on this expanding area of plant production.